Welcome to Behind the Bastards Morning Edition, the early edition of Behind the Bastards for morning people recorded early in the morning. In fact, I have it on good authority that this is the earliest a podcast has ever been recorded in the history of the medium. Uh, that's the thing we sacrificed what for time you is here it, behind Robert? the bastards. Robert, what time is it? I, I, my eyes won't even focus, Sophie. It's so early in the morning. The clocks I, don't I, even I, display the time. Surely dawn has not broken. Katie, how long have you been awake? Minutes. Minutes, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's the, the, the horrible hour of 12.34 p.m. Yes, well, welcome to Behind the Bastards. I've been awake bastards. for many hours <laughs> behind the bastards. Katie, <laughs> Cody. How are you doing on this again ungodly morning? This 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 hour so early that roosters can't even crow because the the sun would be like, "Don't crow yet, rooster. It's not time for you. It's not time." Yeah, I can That's hear them they would in tell the distance. Rooster. They're like, <laughs> mm-hmm. "That's well, exactly they're trying, but like, it's still got that morning phlegm stuff going mm-hmm. on." Mm-hmm. Well, it's hot as fuck, and it's still so early. It is hot. It is hot. Yeah, it is hot. It is hot. Just like my co-hosts today, <laughs> who I guess I already introduced, but I wanted to do another introduction. Yeah, too. we are both hot. Cody's Thank got you. his ice pack to his face. <laughs> Cody is, <laughs> is holding an ice pack to his body because his air conditioning is broken. Um, how, are, how are you both doing today? Oh, you know, just here I am here. You're here. I've it- done stuff. I, I got a question for you both. Yeah. We finished our Ben Shapiro episodes I know. a while back. I've been um, lost without them. Yeah. Do you both feel like there's a gnawing emptiness in the center of your soul, a pit that cannot be filled? I, I mean, yeah, but I I didn't make the connection between that and Ben Shapiro <laughs> till right now. <laughs> so just like a general sense. Is what, yeah, yeah, just yeah, a yeah, general yeah. sense that like the 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 oh. the center of your being has been hollowed out by some sort of earth mover, uh leaving you leaving you like a like a like a like a bag of flesh without without um without meat inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Meatless <laughs> bag. A meatless yeah, bag. A yes. meatless a meatless bag of human. Mm-hmm. Um just just screeching into the night Brett! wishing <laughs> wishing he were still there but he's not ben won't give him back to us because we didn't appreciate him enough we tried, i know but i uh, you didn't you the listener took him for granted him enough. I think. every yeah. night i uh, i mumble take a bullet for you babe uh, mm-hmm. over and over and over again and i know you uh, also text that to our group chat um well, it's, true. it's getting yeah. disturbing yeah, <laughs> yeah. No? take a bullet it's, for you babe it's called love so i don't know what the problem is <laughs> that's cody's you know, love I, it, language you guys that's his love language <laughs> i am well informed cody that love is a battlefield so you might get your <laughs> chance um so uh, we need another book and uh, i was thinking maybe let's try something a little bit different we may have to go through a couple of things but but we, there were there were a handful of different the game books. of thrones <laughs> yeah, i'm just gonna read Actually. game of thrones to you motherfuckers <laughs> Are we ever going to get that last <laughs> book, do you think? No. no. I don't either. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. What a disappointment. I mean, as as an author who has written a fiction book, were I to get hundreds of millions of dollars and buy a lighthouse, I would probably stop producing fiction. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, they nailed it in the show, so why even bother? Why, why mess with perfection, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the power the power of stories, you see, is the true meaning of the Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. Cody's being sarcastic because I don't think he believes a word of what he said. No, it's terrible. And maybe having uh, one of the main characters practi- practically look at the camera and go, truly, the writers of the stories, are they really heroes? <laughs> is maybe a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> I forgot that that happened. It's so um, bad. going to turn into just a Game of Thrones podcast. <laughs> Well, I just reached up and grabbed a book from my bookshelf. And this is a special book. Um, you can wow. hear it. I'm doing the cinema verite thing. I want you to hear me mm-hmm. open this. Wow, I'm very, taking it out of very nice. a very nice plastic wrapped package. And I'm pull, pulling up the ooh, really nice business card that the person who sent it gave me. Because this was sent to me by 
Well, I don't know if I should read his name. I'll just give his first name. A guy named, well, I don't know if I should do that. <laughs> this was sent to me by a rare books dealer who is a fan of the show. Uh, and I have your business card in front of me, friend. I'm not going to read it because I don't know if you would want me to read your name out on the air to a couple hundred thousand this people. This person's at home um, going, no, no, read it, read it! <laughs> Look, I'm, I, 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 I want you to know that I appreciate, well, I'll read, uh, I'll say it's ellipsis rare books. Um... So this wonderful person at Ellipsis Rare Book sent me a lovely card um, and a really nice letter and a copy of, can you guys see what the cover says? No. Well, maybe. The Goat Gland, the goat gland, gland transplantation. transplantation. Oh, the right, Goat Gland de- Transplantation. <laughs> so once upon a time, friends, there was a man named John R. Brinkley. And we've done a two-parter on John R. Brinkley for Behind the Bastards. And I, I, I'm, I'm happy that you're both kind of coming in cold to this because Brinkley's an odd fellow. And we talk about his whole life in the show. John R. Brinkley was a fake doctor who believed that if you surgically inserted goat testicles into the testicles of human beings, it would make them sexual dynamos uh, oh, and no. provide a wide variety of health benefits. I think, I, it's, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not a scientist. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think that's a very strong hypothesis. And I don't think... It warrants an experiment to test this out. Well, he did more than an experiment. He was one of the most popular doctors in the country. He operated clinics in multiple states. Uh, He inserted goat glands. uh, That's what he called testicles is glands into thousands upon thousands of human beings. Um, A lot of people died and got horrific infections. Uh, He was eventually stripped of his medical license, uh, but he used the money that he made. Because he was in prison? Or no, no, of course not. No, okay, okay. Uh, it, it, yeah, no. He, uh, I mean, he he ran for governor of Kansas, um, and uh, he didn't he didn't quite get it. He he ran for office a couple of times, uh, and eventually fled to Mexico. Um, but he had he operated in in the U.S. in the south of like Texas, uh, a, a massive uh, or sorry, and in Mexico, a massive like radio station like the most powerful one in the world. And he became a country music pioneer um, and helped to, because of the people he put on his show, uh, create like the modern concept of country music. So he is a man who surgically inserted testicles into thousands of people uh, leading to unspeakable suffering and death. Uh, And also helped create country music. A true jack of all trades. Yeah, well, two, two trades. Well, he's a for office. Three. He's a fascinating fellow. Jack of enough trades. And plenty of trades. This is a book by Sidney B. Flower called "The Guide to Goat the Goat Trans the Goat Gland Transplantation." Um, And I don't know who Sidney B. Flower is, uh, but he must be related to. Um. uh, yeah, because there's a picture of John R. Brinkley right in the center here. So this is one of the books that Dr. Brinkley's, because, uh, you know, he, like I said, he had offices in multiple states. He had a massive enterprise. This is one of the things that he put out. And we're going to give it a read on the air and we'll see. It's not a huge book. Maybe this has the legs for multiple episodes. Maybe this is just something we talk about today. But um, uh, I th- we're going to talk about goat gland transplantation today. And I, I hope you all enjoy coming in cold to this wonderful story of a man who put another animal's testicles uh, inside human beings. I'm enjoying more than it one, so far. More than once. A, co- uh, uh, a lot of times, Cody. Mm-hmm, a yeah. shocking number of times. Yeah. Did people die? One would be shocking, but yeah. Yes, um, Katie. People absolutely people died. People died, yes. Just wanted so, to make sure. You know how if you get like a cut and you rub dirt in it, the yeah. cut will get infected? Sure. Well, imagine that cut is your genitalia and the dirt is another animal's genitalia that are just being crudely shoved in there by a guy who's mostly into running a radio station. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. It doesn't work great is what I'm saying. I'll see you guys later. I'm going to. I'm going (laughs) to go back to bed. (laughs) Yeah. So. This is uh, as the intro period. So there's we've got us a picture of John Brinkley, which is the same picture of Dr. Brinkley that's in his Wikipedia page. So it must be the one that he considered his best photo, which is not a good photograph. Like not not at all. He he looks like shit in this picture. Mm, yeah. Not yes. um, he's toe headed, I think, is the fair way to describe him. Um, toe his head, his his head looks like a toe. So I. Th- OK, but I think toe headed is an actual phrase for somebody that's like blonde. 
Oh, well, I think it's a phrase for someone whose head looks like a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe thumb-headed? Thumb-headed? <laughs> yeah, it could be a thumb. Yeah, his whole body looks like a knuckle. Toe face. Um, so the, the, the title page informs us that this is number five in the One Best Way series of New Thought books, uh, The Goat Gland Transplantation, as originated and successfully performed by J.R. Brinkley, M.D. of Milford, Kansas, USA, in over 600 operations upon men and women. Set up an electrotyped May 1921. So this is this is, you know, three years after World War One ended, people are are looking for good news. And Dr. Brinkley is offering them the good news that they can get another animal's testicle shoved inside of them. Good Author's news. preface. <laughs> what? Katie, that's good news. Congratulations. You have been selected. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, imagine if that was what they called you about instead of your car's extended warranty. <laughs> we have well, exciting news about the kinds of testicles we can put inside of you. You're eligible for an upgrade. Author's preface. Though dealing exactly with a surgical subject, this book is a layman's word to layman. It is an attempt to say to the general public a few things about this amazing work of Dr. J.R. Brinkley of Milford, Kansas, which he is debarred from saying for himself in this simple form. He has under consideration a book of his own covering the subject of goat gland transplantation, his experiments, successes, failures, theories, and conclusions, which will probably be issued in the winter of 1922. So basically, he's got a big book for doctors coming out, but we this is a book for you, the little guy. This is a book yeah. for the common man to understand all of the complexities about having another animal's glands shoved into your body. So that's 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 how this is being built. Okay. Um Oh god, okay, yeah. Uh, some attention is paid to the pioneer work of Dr. Frank Lidston of Chicago in the transplanting of human glands into human beings, but rather by way of emphasizing the fact that Dr. Brinkley, with the choice of human, monkey, goat, or sheep glands before him, chose the goat glands in preference to any other in his for his field of experiment and operation, and has never for a moment regretted his choice or seen any reason to alter it. Never for a moment. Don't even you ask. You have your choice of glands. Human, monkey, goat, oh. sheep. <laughs> Uh, so without any wish to enter upon a controversy, the author is impelled to take some notice of the statement of Dr. Sergei Voronov of Paris, who during his recent visit to the United States announced that he pinned his faith almost exclusively to the glands of the anthropoid apes as most suitable for transplantation into human beings. While he lamented the natural scarcity of obtainable material, Dr. Voronov is credited with having performed over 120 transplantations upon rams, but none whatsoever of goat glands upon human beings, and not more than two or three of simian glands upon human beings. His statement, therefore, that successful transplantation of the glands of the goat into a human being is impossible and cannot succeed is empirical and entirely unsupported by any experience of his own in the matter. So they're defending Dr. Brinkley, this other doctor who's putting ape testicles in people is like, you can't put goat balls in people. That's just not going to work. But these so the others... <laughs> First off the bat, we have to argue against that guy because Dr. Brinkley, as we're informed by the book, has done this more than 600 times successfully. So we go through this introduction. It is a fact beyond all gainsaying that Dr. Brinkley's operation has in truth cheated old age of its toil in very many cases of both sexes and the improvement or rejuvenation effects both the minds and bodies of those treated by this method and this rejuvenation is lasting to the extent of the doctor's observation. It, it is presuming to say that it is a permanent improvement. Upon that point, no one has any right to offer an opinion because there are no facts upon which to found it. But Dr. Brinkley's earliest cases operated upon three years ago up to the present time have shown no no demutation whatsoever in the in the effects secured. Neither the women nor the men have lost any particle of their increased vitality during this lapse of time. Who can say how long the good effects will continue? Dr. Brinkley's opinion is that the improvement will run for possibly 15 years, at the end of which time he expects to reoperate upon any cases that show a slowing down in the life pro Yes, Katie, you have questions about this? This is absurd! <laughs> Wait, so how many people had a successful transplant and then went on to, like, have... He's saying 600 men and women experienced an increase in vitality after having these goat testicles stuffed in them. Okay. I'd like to see that data. Well, I mean, I bet by the end of this book, I'll be able to perform this surgery. <laughs> Cody, you're up. Okay. So, <laughs> <Pass>. <laughs> 
This is no poet's dream, but the stern reality of a young surgeon's work in a hospital, extending over three memorable years of achievement in a virgin field. Dr. Brinkley has worked out his problem alone, save for the devoted aid of his wife, who is also a licensed physician. He is today a poor man and expects to remain so because he has refused every alluring offer made him looking to the establishment of this goat bland operation as a commercial proposition on a big scale. He is governed by his ethical vows and retains his independence, but the world would call him a fool for not turning his discovery to his greatest pecuniary profit. Since he prefers to remain true to his ideals in this matter, it is for us at least to be thankful and accord him the recognition to which the scientist is entitled who puts his work above his profits. Okay, so what I'm getting from this is that everyone's like, you're at, no, dude, we're not. You got not a profit. Getting, and then this is like some fanboy writing the book saying that. Yeah, I mean, this is, is a guy Dr. Brinkley hired and he wants yeah. to make it clear that Dr. Brinkley isn't getting rich, although he absolutely was getting rich. He, of he made he millions of dollars before he died penniless as a result of all of the malpractice allegations against him. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so he's he's a hero. Uh, he's a he's, hero. He's a hero. Uh, we are not... So chapter one, Dr. Brinkley's theory. Um, oh, the theory. Good. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you, are you excited to hear the theory? <laughs> I bet it's... Pumped. I bet it's... I bet it's sound. I am so excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it has been a long quest and, in the main, fruitless, though it might be said, in fairness, that Brown Sicard's method of using the expressed testicular juice as medicine by mouth or injection for the renewal of youth was probably the true parent of the present method, familiar method of using the extracts of various glands or the pulverized substance of the glands themselves. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, apparently. So this was a thing back in the day. Um, and I had not heard that they had just expressed testicle juice and given it to people, but I guess that's how this started. Yeah, you gotta like, start out, um, light? You just juice the balls and <laughs> uh-huh. give it to somebody, which sounds like you're just drinking cum, right? Is that... Is that <laughs> yeah, is yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually you think ju- it's grosser the ball, and they're just grinding up a... the entire testicle. Yeah, um, pulverize, you pulverize it, right? Yeah, you pulverize the balls. You got to pulverize the balls uh, and then and then drink the ball juice. Um, Jesus Christ. Genius is synthetic, elliptic, sut and sudden, but always clear and sure. Dr. Brinkley began with a theory and by no means a new theory. From the theory, he deduced rapidly and acted. The results of the acts prove the truth of the theory. That theory has been variously stated in its most familiar form being, quote, in all living forms, the basis of all energy is sex energy. Um, that's like yeah 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 i mean this is like tied into all this weird stuff they believed about come back in the old days like if you like it's um, like the humors right like yeah 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 if you ejaculate you're losing vitality so you never want to come unless you have to because it's going to make you weaker it's like proud boy stuff it's no fap does that last i checked in he hadn't come in like four years that's horrible that's I, also someone that is probably I, not a super safe person, I would guess. I didn't. I it's not not because of the cum. I was like, I don't think it was benefiting believe. his life very well. <laughs> no, that's saving like saving up that life energy was doing any good. But that's like a know. proud boy thing. The no fap stuff. Yeah. Like, that's one of the things that's so funny about it is that they're like specifically going back to things that like this dudes like this believed in 1920. Uh, like yeah, that if you yeah. if you if you don't come, you you retain all of that energy to be more powerful. Uh, and, and that's, I think in general, if you're the kind of person who is like, well, I'm just going to save up all of my cum so that I can keep all of the power inside myself. You might be kind of unhinged. I'm going to save up all of my cum so I can make one super baby. <laughs> one gigantic. <laughs> it's going to be big. It's going to be the biggest baby in the world. Oh, okay. Boy. Yeah. Uh, looking for the facts to confirm or disprove this assertion, all investigators have been faced with similar phenomena, such as when the male fowl is sterilized in order that he may grow big and fat for the market la- uh, for the market later, he loses his cock's plumage and gains in weight. In the psychic domain, the changes are still more marked. The capon is a coward, shunning the contest for supremacy. He does not forage for the hens, inviting them to feed upon what he has found, but looks after himself first and last. He is lazy, fug- thuggish, and selfish. Oh boy! So yeah, this is like some Jordan Peterson stuff, being like, "Well, when you when you geld an animal, it becomes uh, it changes its behavior and it becomes like uh, lethargic and and less aggressive." And so clearly, 
if you come as a human man, you will also become weak. Yeah, your energy is gone. Your um, your energy. You've gone. given it. Uh, it's just a. Uh, it's uh it's less Jordan Peterson. It's more Cernovich, right? Yeah, there's Doesn't definitely he, he some literally has. Here. Uh, I feel like he's literally like written stuff about that. Yeah, um, actually, this next paragraph might be a Mike Cernovich paragraph. He may have just stolen this. When men are castrated, as in the East, in youth, when they are prized as custodians of the harem, they are fat, unusually large a fl- a frame, but short-lived. The growth of hair on the head is often scant. On the face and body, it is altogether missing. The voice is high, partaking of a treble quality. When through surgical operations or accident, it happens that a man is deprived of the testicular glands in youth, early manhood, or even middle age. The same changes follow, as in the case of the eunuch the hair on the face and body disappears the voice changes from deep to high tone and mentally the man develops inertia and cowardice <laughs> no notes yeah i mean i for one thing i i'm fairly certain that eunuchs were renowned to live longer that, yeah this all seems really based in facts robert so i don't it's know called, it's called science i don't know what you want yeah and if i'm like, if i'm um, remembering from game of thrones they could still be very aggressive. Um, mm-hmm. That's right. Also, that's right. right. That's, Varys, the whole, that's the whole point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Varys lived through all of it. So, mm-hmm. dang. Did um, Varys die at the end? I think he died yeah, the, eventually. Uh, the, yeah, uh, the Unsullied, had, right? You, uh, the Unsullied, yeah. though. Uh, and they yeah. were still well, able they, they to, like... Able, they were able they to, were focus, to do what right? Batman can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They definitely... Yeah, those Unsullied were... Mm-hmm. Very cute. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were, Katie. But not according to John Brinkley. When women have, for any reason, had their ovaries removed by surgical operation, marked changes follow, which vary much in detail, but carry certain general similarities. The face and body age rapidly in appearance, and there is a slowing up of functions of the organs and a t- with a tendency to masculinity and tastes, behavior, and oh. feelings. <laughs> I hate this guy. In any notes? Just so you Again, can go fucking. I'm a man of science, all right. I'm just I go where the facts are. So you are. I don't follow the facts. Follow the facts. So, speaking of the facts, Cody, Katie, please. You want to know a fact that I have that I've got for you right now? This is a it, fact. Is it about uh, what would it be? It's uh, about the products and services that support this podcast. Oh yeah, we got to do that. Yeah, we got to do that. So. Just the facts, people. And the fact is, it's time for you to motherfucking listen to ads. <laughs> We're back. Oh my gosh. Uh I I, I love a good I love a I love a an ad. Uh I for one plan to get all of the goat gland transplants advertised on this show. For no. sure, one hundred percent. No, oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely not. So, use those promo codes. Yeah. How about now? It is important always that you realize that though we may seem to stress the physical improvement in human beings brought about by this gland transplantation, the more important change of the two is the mental. And Doctor Brin- Brinkley's theory that all caps now all energy is sex energy means exactly that the powerful brain, equally with the beautiful face, owes its strength and vigor exactly to the right functioning of the sex glands. We must not be accused here of running to extravagance. It is not stated that all human brains are of equal power or can be developed to equal power. It is stated that all human brains of unusual power are brains that are well nourished by the testicular secretions and it is implied with full understanding of what this statement leads to that if for any reason there is an interference with the sex gland activity the unusual brain will cease in a short time to be unusual in its power grasp and faculty of clear continuous thought there are so many phrases in that sentence that i went what um, well, you, oh, you got notes on this katie All right, no let's hear i don't them. i don't have notes <laughs> i couldn't keep up with them um but i just don't like this guy there was something about sexual secretions. What was? I oh yeah, hear it again. Yeah, that that if you have an unusual brain, and that means like in a in a positive sense, like a brain yeah. of unusual quality, it's because your testicles are bathing your brain in secretretions. Yep, that was the first one that I reacted to. I did not know that. This that's is why a, men are, are naturally lot. smarter than women. I yes, think is what the book is saying sense. because could, women don't have testicular know, secretions to coat the brain in. And here I was beating myself up being, for being so dumb, and now I know the reason why. Um, I do think all energy is sex energy is catchy phrase, though. It, it, yeah, it, it, it's a catchy phrase. You can see why it works. It sounds like something a dude. It sounds like something like a tantric sex guru would yep. say in Goa to a tourist in order Absolutely. to get her to um 
to fuck and, like, <laughs> maybe some like edgy sports drinks uses it as their I, like uh, slogan Katie, if there was like a red bull style beverage that said <laughs> yeah. all energy is sex energy on the can and that was just the name of the drink yeah. i would never drink anything else that would I'm be i'm telling my you water. this would be this is well, this is something we should do yeah we and maybe make a million maybe dollars. maybe we throw it on a shirt yeah, all energy is sex energy. We, it could just be a picture of the three of us being pals, mm-hmm. giving the yeah. thumbs up, and then all energy is sex <laughs> energy Wholesome. in big block Wait, letters. Wholesome can we content. make it? But that has yeah. to be a worst year ever merch. Yeah, let's do it. It's, it was. I mean, it's just true. Mm-hmm. It is true. All energy We're is just sex trying energy. To spread the it's word. in caps right here on page 14 of this ridiculous God. little book. Uh, um, you know what this guy's scientific field is called? Science. Alchemy. Well, <laughs> oh, Cody's been uh, working on that. You know what? That. That's going to do it for us job. today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you see how amazing and far-reaching is the application of this apparently simple theory that sex energy is the basis of all human energy. It is, after all, only another way of saying that all things proceed from a common source, that life is one, that mind and body derive from the same source, that energy is so much an integral of matter, that in the final analysis, matter is only static energy, since the atom is made of molecules and molecules of electrons and electrons of electricity or energy. In saying, therefore, that sex energy is the basics of all human energy, we may quite possibly be trending towards a solution of the world old question of what life itself is someday Sex? without a doubt we shall surprise this secret at its source at present we are fortunate to have discovered through dr brinkley's careful proving of his theory that human energy no matter its manifestation to be physical or mental has a common basis of supply the sex glands and that their activity determines a brilliant mentality or a dull brain oh my god oh um, yeah. so this is the secret to the source of all life it all starts with testicles everything in, in the beginning of time, there was just a pair of balls <laughs> lying yeah. on the earth that got hit nothing. by lightning. Then and there was a fish. God. Yeah. It's just basic. You learn that in Sunday school. You learn that in Sunday school. Next, we have a page picture of Dr. Brinkley and his wife. And he does look like a man who is bursting with sex energy. Yeah. Like yeah. His, his brain is just dripping in they testicular secretions. They aren't touching. The well, no, if you wet. were to touch it's Dr. Weird. Brinkley, you would explode out of lust. You would it's, come so yeah, fucking fast. Yeah, it would be a full body come, which is a real, uh, can be a real problem. Especially since people only had like one set of clothing back then. Chapter two, the practice men. Dr. Brinkley began his experiments in gland transplanting upon animals in the year 1911, three years before the European War, using goats, sheep, and guinea pigs as his subjects. He ran beyond the limits of his resources in this experimental work on animals, which was interrupted by his enlistment in the army. Da-da-da. Okay, so yeah, we're talking about a little bit of his history here. Let's move on to how you shove testicles into people. Later, we will dwell a little more on some of his results. It is worthy of note in passing that his first experiment upon a human being was an unqualified success. He transplanted the goat glands into a farmer who was 46 years of age, happily married, but childless. And one year after the transplantation, a child was born, who was christened Billy in honor of the no. circumstances no, no, responsible no, no, for his birth. No, 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 no,
God, I wish I'd I wish I'd cut I'd come of age then. I would have made so much money, you guys. Robert, you I'd might, have been you, shoving things into people like you left and right. You absolutely may have been uh, there then. I might have been John Brinkley, you're right. I, I mean, there is a world. <laughs> because I love cutting things and I love being on the radio. So I do feel like I would have done the same things he did, more or less. Um, this is a side note, but a psychic once told me that in a past life I was a dolphin and um I should cut this, cut this, cut this. Everybody <laughs> will get mad at me. I, whenever I've mentioned anything hooky bookie that I do for fun, people, people get tell angry. Me, people get mad at me. So cut it. Uh, but no, I people get so angry. They also get angry at like me. to believe it's true. They got angry at me last week, a bunch it. of people, because I said that we should have a have bullies go around and beat up Bill Gates when he was a child so he didn't <laughs> become a monster. And How dare you? said I was endorsing bullying. Um, well, I feel like Bill Gates probably was heavily bullied. And he was heavily bullied. Why, yes, it was very, why he was, was very he much turned a, into yeah. a monster, right? And I, like, it's fine if people, like, you know, not every joke's good. But it's interesting to me that when I talk about, say, hollowing out the center of the United States to make it a gigantic child prison and then shooting children with darts from the air when they turn 18 and forcing them to work as accountants in San Bernardino, that doesn't get, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's because more people experienced bullying um, than were hunted by with adults. Right, right. Uh, it's more personal. And also experienced but bullying and like didn't kids. turn into that, right? Like, Hmm? Uh, my response is yeah and most people don't like kids what was yours cody oh i was just saying also like most people that were bullied didn't turn out to be monsters yeah they did like i i, right. I was bullied a lot as a kid yeah exactly why i made the joke anyway uh uh it's you can't you shouldn't you can't say anything on the internet katie without some group of people getting angry but definitely the thing that makes the most people angriest is talking about like psychics or whatever that's just People go out of their goddamn minds. Um, Fuck you guys. I was like a that. dolphin. Katie, I believe you were a dolphin. I, <laughs> I, I, I have. It's what, you know, I, it's, it's either you believe in things uh, that 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 you can't prove or you don't believe in things that you can't prove. And to me, all things that you can't prove are the same. Like I'd Christianity, believe, Islam, yeah. dolphins, like all all in the same spectrum of like, yeah, but whatever. Like, <laughs> like, I don't I, I, the ju- I, I don't know about psychics, but I would like to believe in past lives. Yeah, what does it I hurt anybody? Fuck it. Well, it does I think hurt that a lot that's of people, more comforting but, to me than yeah. the thought of God. But anyway, this is I not I, that conversation. I mean, it's one of those things. I tend to fall more in line with like the with like the the scientific side of things. But mm-hmm. also I remember stories like the tale of Dr. John Brinkley, who was at one <laughs> point a respected doctor who convinced a lot of people that the science said that all energy came from testicular secretion. So you should shove this goat balls inside these we, goat balls inside what your What do you guys want, if anything, from this kept yeah. in the episode? All of it. Every um, bit of it, Sophie. Katie? I don't know. Every inch of it. Let me think about it. <laughs> okay. okay. Anyway, whatever. It's it, it, it. Just remember when you think about whether or not you know science is is the thing that you should put all of your faith in. That a lot of people used to think that this was science, uh, and maybe the only thing that you should trust is uh, a, a, a a hearty machete in your hands and a set of goat balls hanging underneath your regular balls. Amen you know? to that. That's all you, you can really trust inside in inside your regular balls. Inside on, your, let's... maybe that's where you went wrong. Maybe if you had them, because your testicles are outside of your body. Maybe the goat testicles also needed to be outside of your body. Right, right. I feel like he's he's uh, forcing, um, I guess, you know, testicles into testicles, which is not you know not a phrase, <laughs> but uh, not, not, not at all a phrase because you know, no one else but this man would do that. Yeah, it's yeah. not a not a com- No, you'd hear that phrase and be like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, you try to park your car into a garage that's too small. It's like, ah, it's like shoving two sets of testicles into <laughs> right, one right. testicle. <laughs> yeah, you're like, uh, yeah, it is like that. <laughs> Why did you say that? <laughs> I, I, I agree. And I'm going to go now and I'm not going to mm-hmm. come back. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I feel like maybe just like getting the ghost testicles like near testicles or yeah. something like that. As near, opposed like, to, yeah, like um, like a like a like some sort of I don't know religious fetish. Like you you wear mm-hmm. them around your neck or something to make you exactly. more virile. Exactly, yeah. like a rabbit's foot. Like a rabbit's foot, a goat's testicle just around your neck. Exactly. Perfect. You guys want to hear about his method of transplanting the glands into a man? I, I guess. actually don't. 
Okay, no, well, I, I you're going not. to hear it anyway, Cody. You can't stop this. It's happening to you. I can mute you. His method of transplanting the glands into a man is by making two incisions in the man's scrotum under simple local anesthesia, a practice, a practically painless operation. Oh, but from good. This point on- I love practically painless. Op- <laughs> God. Uh, but from this point on, the it virtually varies. doesn't kill you. <laughs> it's barely <laughs> deadly. Uh, no two cases are exactly alike and dr brinkley performs no two operations exactly alike this is the reason he explains why with the best will in the world to teach his fellow practitioners what to do and how to do it he is nevertheless unable to state in writing exactly what treatment to use to cover all cases that's good science right there Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm It cannot be taught by correspondence, and simple though it sounds to hear it, it cannot be learned by attendance at a few clinics. It is delicate in this sense, that it is not rightly performed in the individual case the glands will slough. That means loss of time, loss of temper, and the waste of a perfectly good pair of young goat glands. Ah! Ah, Lost a pair of glands rotting away in your testicles. Damn! Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Uh, uh. I really should have muted you. Now Cody is... um, (laughs) Clutching his ice pack like a teddy bear. It's a blanket. It's mm-hmm. my security. Clutching his ice pack ice. like a pair of animals' testicles, mm-hmm. giving yeah. him virility and strength. You hold close to your heart. It's mm-hmm. called energy, okay? Mm-hmm. We all have it. All, all energy energies. is ice energy, which is just <laughs> exactly. frozen sex energy. Look, what color is ice? White. What color is testicle secretions? Also kind of a white-ish color. So there you are. That's why Antarctica is the sexiest continent, although not for much longer. Um, Another very important thing which his experiments have taught Dr. Brinkley is this. The glands on being removed from the goat must be immediately placed in a salt solution warmed to blood heat, and they must be used on the human being, all caps now, within 20 minutes from the time they are (gasps) taken from the goat. You can't refrigerate them. So how do you do this? You cut open the person, you let them sit, you get the goat balls. You You get them goat balls. I mean, maybe you cut the goat balls off. It looks like, I mean, I'm going to guess a guy like Dr. Brinkley, he can make that first incision in your balls in under 20 minutes. All he's doing is a professional. All of these jokes and stuff and like the horror of having duped people into doing this. But this is animal cruelty. (laughs) Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, this is for sure. Animal cruelty. Unbelievable. (laughs) No, what he did was horrific. Yeah, it's horrific. He's a monster. Absolutely. Um, But man, it's 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 pretty wacky. (laughs) Is. Wacky. So the more quickly after removal they're used, the more likely they are to take hold and grow. Don't, don't think that ever happened. I don't know if that's <laughs> what I know bear. about science. Uh, pardon the phrase. I don't know if that's going to bear any fruit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can use pig I hearts, know. right? People can have pig hearts. So why not have, except for the fact, of course, I think with a pig heart, you're like, if I understand the surgery, kind of like weaving it in to like where a normal heart would so that like it blood flows through it and stuff. And he's just kind of jamming testicles jamming inside testicles of a person. In. <laughs> yeah. I cannot like, believe that someone conceived a child after this. Let it, you know, live. I mean, I alone. think his wife may have just fucked Dr. Yeah, Brinkley. I think maybe. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe it was like a, that was his ploy. It's like, if I you need to get a, for a paternity I, test on to Billy goat, Oh, they didn't have those back then. All they had was, yeah, looks like a baby. <laughs> that's got to be a goat baby. Look at how good it kicks. that's a baby. <laughs> oh, man. All the kids in his town growing up. It's oh, going ba 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 Yeah, I mean, the baffling thing is maybe because of the weirdness of the time, the kids were like, I wish I'd been born from a goat's testicles. I've just got my dad's regular cum. Yeah, you're right. There mm-hmm. could have been some of that. Now... In his, in his men cases, he sometimes uses one gland, sometimes two, sometimes the whole gland, just as it came from the young goat, sometimes a part of the gland only, but he leans to the opinion that the gland of the three weeks old goat gives the best results if used entire, without trimming. Sometimes he lays the gland upon the outside of the human testes, connecting part to with part. Sometimes he opens the testes by incision and lays the goat gland within the cleft. Very often there are adhesions which must be broken down before the goat gland, goat gland can function rightly. Very often there are unsuspected 
suspected hydrocells forming cysts in the testicular mass, which must be cut out, or there may be variocell requiring attention. The patient suffers very slight inconvenience. The local anesthetic is enough to dull the pain, even of this breaking down of the adhesions, so that it is at its worst no more than the pain of a toothache, and lasts a very brief while. Many of the patients converse with the doctor while the operation is proceeding. The pain is negligible. The doctor proceeds according mm-hmm. to the condition, age, etc. of his patient. He may litigate, that is to say, tie off the tubes that connect with one testes or the other, or both. Oh my god. Um, so he does all sorts of weird shit. I have my camera off because of the internet, and you guys can't tell how anxious that just made me uh, listening to all of this stuff. Ugh. Yeah. Sorry, that was my big reaction right now. Well, Katie, I've got something good for you. The glowing letters on file of the doctor's office attest to this, this being the success of the treatment. Here, for instance, is a letter from a man, 81 years of age, who says, I feel like a boy of 18. This is something I have not known for more than 40 years. The goat glands have certainly done the work for me, but I wish, doctor, you would fix it so that I could complete the sexual act. Wait. (gasps) (laughs) Wait a second. What? Pardon me? Wait, did he just admit that he couldn't complete the sexual act? Oh, okay. It goes on to explain it. Don't worry. This completion of the sexual act is exactly the thing that is to be avoided in the case of these old men. All animal energy is sex energy. The conversion of this is that sex energy, the conversion of this sex energy into other forms of energy, physical and mental, is the aim. And this aim would be frustrated if these old men were given the full power to do as they pleased with their newfound youthful vigor. You cannot always trust them. That is the purpose of the litigating of both sides, to making the the emission of the semen impossible. The life force, then, having no other outlet, can do nothing but reinvigorate the entire system by pouring its fr- precious fluids so into the blood. basically they're blocking you up <laughs> They're so giving you he's, come. He's giving us, the, he, when old people come in, he gives them vasectomies. Yeah. <gasps> oh, boy. And he shoves a goat testicle in there, too. Yeah, just for good measure. Because you can't let him come. You, you can't always trust them. Did he mean the old person or the or the goat the balls. old person you can't okay. trust the old person or not because like they're gonna him. be so they're gonna have so much new horny energy yeah you can't trust them not to fuck so you have to stop them from being able to come um boy this is thrilling uh, i i feel like i have to point out that it is time for another ad if you want yeah you know what else will tie off your vast deference and make it <laughs> you Christ incapable Robert. of ejaculation <laughs> That is not the how ads. tying off the vast deference works. But yes, these ads. Listen to these ads and you will never come again. That's that's the behind the bastards guarantee. We're back and we're learning more about when Dr. Brinkley is going to let you come. I mean, so- <laughs> We hope soon, right? Suppose now the case is of a man of 50 who is physically run down, married, and anxious to be the father of a child. In such a case, if the man is physically sound, Dr. Brinkley will do one of two things. After the transplantation of the new glands, he will either ligate one side permanently and allow one testicle to carry on the work of rejuvenation while the other can be used for procreation, or he will ligate both sides and say to the man, I am tying off both testes because you will need to rebuild for at least one year before you should think of becoming a father. But I am ligating with linen thread, which does not dissolve and if you come back to me in one year from now i will remove the ligatures one or both and you will then be able to procreate this is reasonable and wise talk and the man makes no objection when the year of probation as you might call it has expired the man returns to the hospital the ligature is removed and he goes home in a couple of days these things are not fairy tales but solid facts amazing as they sound to you there are five goat gland babies today among dr brinkley's patients that he knows of four boys and one girl there are probably many of whom more of whom he has heard nothing for patients have a way of moving out of touch after after a while. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> that's good science. Why do they, yeah. why do they, where do they go? Why don't they want to talk to the doctor yeah. anymore? <laughs> I uh, call your, why call your goat ball doctor. Come mm-hmm. on. Stay in touch. You did such a good job. Mm-hmm. Um, Man, they were really admitting a lot of bad stuff in here. Yeah, they definitely didn't see it. But uh, they don't know. Yeah, they don't get it. Yeah. Chapter three, the practice women. So we got a lot of good information in this one. This, this is, this one's for the ladies. Sophie, can we get a little bit, a little bit of mood music here? No. Like some smooth, some smooth jazz or something for the ladies. Okay. Well, Dr. Brinkley's hospital. Okay. I'm going to say it every episode from now on. Please don't. Um, 
At Dr. Brinkley's Hospital, a beautifully appointed private residence, it is a comfort to women patients to have the doctor's wife, herself a competent physician, surgeon if necessary, at hand during the actual operation. Mrs. Brinkley administers the local anesthetic, or the general anesthetic if that is what's called for, as it sometimes is. While the bulk of the operations performed on both men and women are gland transplantations, a diseased condition of tubes and ovaries has sometimes made a, a, a laparotomy necessary, and many major operations have been successfully performed in the white enameled operating room. At such times, a woman and clings to the presence of a woman, and Miss Br- Mrs. Brinkley's kind and pleasant manner is usually sufficient to banish all nervousness. In ordinary cases of gland transplantation into women, where the patient is in good physical condition with no disease of the organs, the operation is as simple as in the case of the man. The speculum discloses the condition of the va- uh, the condition of the vagina, and the insertion of the new ovary is into the mucous membrane of the vagina, leaving the goat ovary about four inches oh, distant from the woman's. My what? God, that's basically normal. Oh, sorry. That's that's the only response I can have to this. Yeah, you got to jam a goat ovary four inches away from your regular ovaries and then you're good to go. The only incision made is a small one. So it's just a small one, one inch yeah. long and painless under low Virtually anesthetic. Virtually painless. <laughs> Where is the incision? In, inside your vagina. Oh, painless. Yeah. Just a painless inch long cut inside your vagina to allow the insertion of another animal's ovary. Sometimes one ovary is implanted, sometimes two. Invariably, the new ovary is trimmed to a reduction in size. Invariably, it is implanted within 20 minutes of its removal from the nanny goat. What, what, what? Cody? Do three. Why not three? Why not four? Why stop why, at two? What is, why? what is the problem That's here? too much vitality, Cody. No I woman can know. handle that much vitality. I, Jesus Christ, I mean, dude. not unless you try. You want them to explode from sheer nanny I mean, goat energy? I have to think that Jordan Peterson absolutely has read this. This does scream of all of those fucking... <laughs> this is the entirety of Jordan Peterson's It's like sex <laughs> education. education, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is some real God bullshit complex stuff. Like, oh, we're gonna... Anyway, go ahead. Cut that. Mm-hmm. I'm rambling, Sophie. No, no. No, Katie. No, you're not. And we're about to get the answer to a question that you had you had posed earlier. So this is this is good. Um... Unfortunately for the goat, the removal of her ovaries usually costs her her life. She mopes for a few days, refuses to eat, and dies. She, she is mopes? always given... She mopes! She mopes for a few days! After now, having... Oh, gosh. I'm she's thinking. always given a general anesthetic, and the removal is painless, at least, if fatal. <laughs> uh, just a painless, fatal operation. It's fine. Pursuing the conclusions drawn from this long experience, Dr. Brinkley has found that women dis- derive more instant benefit from the glands than men with respect to their re- awakened enthusiasm, improved appearance, and recovery of feeling of poise and well-being. Very noticeable is the change of figure which follows the implanting of the new ovaries in the case of a fat woman. The exchange is equally marked in the case of a fat man. A man of abnormal weight, 250 pounds, lost 50 pounds in two weeks following the operation, during which time he remained at the hospital feeling well and strong, but shrinking in girth amazingly. When he left the hospital, Hospital, his clothes hung off him in bags and full. He was dying in the hospital. Yeah. Of course, he right. lost weight. Like, <laughs> oh yes, all, all these patients become very emaciated, and, and uh, <laughs> after just, their they, bodies they just, fight off the decomposing they just keep flesh inside all of all this them. weight. It's an amazing cure. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's the vitality. <laughs> oh Jesus. <clears throat> Dr. Brinkley by no means asserts that the woman whose ovaries have been removed by surgical operation will grow two new ovaries after the transplantation has been made, but he cites the case of a woman whose ovaries had been removed by surgical operation some years previous, the uterus remaining intact, and whom he implanted two goat ovaries, and whose period shortly afterwards returned on a four-day basis, with a 28-day interval. He does not say that the goat ovaries transplanted into the woman have grown new ovaries, but there remains the phenomenon of the renewed menstruation, and it is very difficult to account for. Maybe she was just bleeding, because, again... She had another animal's ovaries put inside of her body. Maybe. <laughs> Perhaps that could cause bleeding. <laughs> I'm not I an mean, expert maybe, here. Not like Dr. But, Brinkley. I mean, do people with such like vi- vitality bleed even? Like if it works and you were not going to bleed, right? Yeah, you would just bleed cum, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> really hate that phrase. <laughs> oh, Cody. Come a, long, come a long way from one pump, one cream. <laughs> We, we have come a long way because Dr. Brinkley would say that's not nearly enough cream. 
He would no. He'd be like, Why? also, One. don't One. if you've got cream, don't pump for the love of God because oh, you're yeah. losing no, 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 your no. vitality. No pump, <laughs> many cream. <laughs> no pumps, all of the cream possible kept inside of you. <laughs> oh God. Never in barren cream. women from a 28 to 35 years of age in whom he has not found a disease, but an atrophied condition of the ovaries. The transplantation has invariably been attended with success to the removal of the barrenness. The new glands evidently bringing about the development of ova. Nor does Dr. Brinkley say that in the case of a man who has had both glands removed by surgical operation, the transplantation will produce new glands for the man. And yet he has had two successes to offset several failures in this very result without any clue as to why the success followed in the one case and not in the other. What? That's good. That's good. He's so the doctor has no idea why it worked once. And sometimes you get new testicles. Sometimes you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One such case was at the hospital during the writers, the writer of this book's visit there in April. She was a paralysis case, quite fat, unable to walk except for putting forward one foot at a time, supported by the arm of someone on each side of her. She was driven to the hospital in an automobile, accompanied by her husband and daughter, from the farm, 200 miles away. Dr. Brinkley strongly urged her not to have the gland operation performed at all, but she insisted upon giving it a trial. It is too soon yet to speak of the results in this case, but in Dr. Brinkley's view, it is asking too much of the glands to expect them to produce favorable results in a case of this severe. Yet at this time, there was in the hospital a young woman suffering from dementia praecox, whose mother had been watching over her for 12 years, and on whom the affliction of her daughter had so weighed that she told the writer she wished God would take one or the other of them, because it was more than she could bear. This young woman has been confined to the state hospital for the insane, and had been treated by specialists for many years without any benefit at all. There was some homicidal media, much depression, and attempts at suicide. She could not be left alone in her room for a moment. But the day after the transplantation of the glands, this young woman embraced her mother and talked so rationally to her that she called in Dr. Brinkley and with tears repeated what her daughter had just said. Dr. Brinkley advised her that the results were altogether too sudden to build upon. There will certainly be ups and downs, he said. You must expect good days and bad days when you will doubt if your daughter is any better. But to make a normal recovery, she ought to show an alteration of good and bad days with the good days. Gro- wow. So, <laughs> yeah, just uh, this mom, his daughter is suicidal. And I'm guessing it's because she has the kind of mom who would have a goat's ovaries shoved into her daughter. Um, in order to cure depression, but the goat. But that's that's the guess, though. Saved right? it. We're do, we're talking about yeah. science. You need to like have some uh some valid theories that you can you can test out. You can't just be like, yeah. well, I, maybe it's because of this obvious thing that's going on. Now, Cody, I know what you're asking next, which is, mm-hmm. can goat ball implantation? stop you from aging stop you from aging yes bring about immortality yes immortality i was gonna i was in the middle of asking it thank you yeah quite a frequent style of inquiry from women to the doctor runs like this i am in good health and in every way normal age 35 i want to remain as i am and grow no older in appearance than i am today do you think that the goat gland operation would keep me from getting any older to this kind of inquiry dr brinkley makes a stereotyped reply something as follows if you are today in good health i should not advise the goat gland operation but would advise it in your case as soon as you have patched passed the change of life in 10 or 15 years from now to the writer he said i cannot conscientiously advise this woman to submit to this operation because i don't know that the glands would advantage her in any way they might or they might not i do not know it is therefore experimental work and cannot take her and i cannot take her money for an experiment i must have something definite in the way of experience to go on there might be some evident condition of ill health to be set right but on the other hand okay So so that's ethical that's ethical. Yeah, that's good ethics. You should Question when you're mark. if you're still childbearing, <laughs> as soon as you have menopause, that's when you're sick enough to get goat te- goat yeah, ovaries and That's what menopause is. It's a sickness. Yeah. Or maybe we've earned a right to <laughs> not bleed every month. Maybe we get to have sex without the fear but Katie, of having a child. Mm. Con- contrary to that, if you get a goat's ovaries inserted, then you'll keep bleeding. Yeah. (laughs) That's good. Yes, because, you know, that's... And he's right, though. I'm wrong. That's what Mm -hmm. women want, is to continuously be uh, available to make babies in. That's what Dr... I mean, yeah, that is what Dr. Brinkley thinks. That's what he thinks. (sighs) He's... I mean, he's a great man. Um, Mm -hmm. That's what I've gathered from this. Yeah, so uh, obviously he's, he's this next chapter, chapter four, Dr. Brinkley's own ser- story uh, claims that he's he's got many cases, ample proof cases uh, that implementation of 
testicles to stare uh, goat testicles to sterile people uh, allows them to bear children already the town is filling up with childless people waiting to be operated upon incidentally <laughs> cases of insanity are cured within 36 hours after a simple operation other diseases also disappear so that's good um wow yeah well because clearly if you can't bear children you're going to go insane yeah for sure for and the way sure. to cure that is an animal's testicles, sex organs that you shove in where your own sex oh, organs man. go. How much more and then of this you're good to go. beautiful book do we have? Well, let's look around and see what, what else we got in this. I'm going to see if there's diagrams. Um, oh, please. No. Oh, yeah. There's some no. nice pictures of people. No, no diagrams. OK, well, OK, so we've got. Uh, there's there's uh, there's there's a lot of weird stuff here the goat reacts like human the goat alone among mammals reacts to poisons almost identically as human beings react and the poison gases of the war had precisely the same effect on him as the soldiers so 1500 goats did their bit in the war in an experimental way these points in his favor and other similarities to man are the reasons which led me to select the goat as the best possible material for this work so that's i hadn't i was unaware that his reasoning for why goat testicles were the best testicles is that if you gas goat Goats with with chlorine gas, they die like people. You know, <laughs> you can't fault that science. You right? cannot fault that science. That's good science. That should do it. Mm-hmm. They die similar. Okay, so I'm finding here on page 38 uh, that when you when you put male goat glands into into men, all uh-huh. of their babies are boys. And if you transplant female goat glands into women, Here all of the babies are girls. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, or probably. He says He says probably. He doesn't wait, really know, but he's putting wait, this in the book anyway. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> what does he probably know? Because the women he implanted lady goat glands in hadn't given birth yet. So he didn't know. But he was like, yeah, probably. Wait, wait. Uh-huh. Lady goat glands into... Ladies. Ladies. Makes them give birth to baby ladies. And male goat glands into men makes their child be so a boy. Okay, well that's what if, nonsense. What if the male <laughs> with the male goat glands fucked the woman with the lady goat glands? I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that would create the birth of a, a, a sort of Ur human, uh, uh, blessed with powers of uh, of of super sense and and enhanced sight. Sign uh, me up. Far beyond the kin of of mortal man, it would create like a kind of Vishnu creature, um, who would who would be uh, invested with all of the power of the universe. I suspect. That's my guess. Um, Why so, didn't they ever try to put lady goat glands into men? Um, well, is it because, sexism or yeah, because cause that would, that, that would probably wouldn't be right. Cody. Yeah. That would leach your male sex energy and replace it with a lady. weak female sex energy. Okay. Um, here's the hospital. You can tell it's a good hospital because it looks exactly like a normal house. I thought that was his house. <laughs> it is also his house. He lived in the hospital. <laughs> okay, I was going to say like, <laughs> that's, that's how you want to do it. All right. Well, I'm just going to sc- scroll through this a little bit here. Um, yeah. Uh, well, this is just a bunch of. Oh, wait. Yeah. Here's here's a photo from the operating room at the Brinkley Hospital. So there's a bunch of doctors. All of those people, all those medical professionals are involved in inserting another animal's testicles into a human being. All of those people fucking suck. Yeah. All of those people are pretty trash. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, I think this is about all we can reasonably it's say certainly all about I can this, handle with it about this book. <laughs> um, oh, here's a picture of the goats. No, here's the, baby. Here's the picture of the goats that are going to be used for testicle. Oh, how dare him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, the people at least are making the stupid choice to do this. Um, the goats are just the goats. goats had no say. The goats yeah. are just the poor innocents. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been All very right. fun. I uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot too. Um, I do think we should read something of Jordan Peterson's on here. Yeah, yeah. This makes me really, really hung- hunger for Jordan Peterson's work. Well, that's been our read through the goat gland transplantation by Sydney B. Flower. Um, 
which I, I have to say, the cover of this book appears to be like a crude image of uh, uh, an old Greek statue. And I, I think it's I think it's probably you, saying that like the goat gland transplant will make you virile like the yeah. ancient pagans. Are you sure that's not just like a mangled goat gland? That yeah, it's just a goat's balls. Yeah, like smashed Once up. They've been removed from their balls, skin. Right? Yeah. yeah, that seems likely, Cody. It's one or the other. Cody, if you were going to insert another animal's organs into a human being, what animal organ would it be? <laughs> a, a human heart and a human heart. Humans no, are animals, that's, right? That's not allowed. A uh, dolphin squeaker. A, little a squeaky, dolphin squeaker. Little squeaky throat. Wait, where wait, would yeah. you put it in a person? The balls. In the balls. You put the yeah. squeaker in the balls yeah. so that whenever people, whenever I'd they come, it, it goes. Throat. Or a baboon yeah. heart in uh, balls. Yes. Oh. Um, or, well, I guess like. To what? pump extra blood into them. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, any answer I give is going to be in inside the balls. So. Okay. I like the squeaker in the throat. Um, or like, uh, you know, yeah, some sort of echolocation, um, in the throat. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, when I say throat, I mean, I mean balls. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Balls. Yeah. Balls. Well, guys. That's has it. this changed your life at all? It's definitely changed the course of my afternoon. Uh, um, and this is mostly all stuff I learned in school. So. Oh. It's not. <laughs> yeah. Cody, uh, you famously went, went to school at Dr. Brinkley's goat testicle hospital. Um, yeah. Which is why uh, you can't read. DBGH uh, represent <laughs> class of <laughs> whatever year that was. Oh. Um, yeah. It's. Yeah. Um, uh, I, mean, I mean, obviously there's more like there are, be- there are better updated textbooks about this topic um sure but this is a nice little refresher like dr jordan b peterson's maps of meaning exactly it's which all is maps there. of how the different meanings that will come into your life when you insert various kinds of testicles into your body exactly we've, that's again what we've it, all, that's we've what all read maps of meaning we all know we've all read maps we, of all, meaning, we yes. all know that that's what it's about uh the go testicle of chaos um, <laughs> the go testicle <laughs> of chaos uh Man, but, um, that's 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 that, going into my next D and D campaign. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's the one, eye of Vecna. <laughs> more merch, more merch uh, possibilities all throughout oh this episode. God. Well, right. guys, that's going to do it for us here at Behind the Bastards. Katie, Cody, do you exist on the internet in some fashion? Uh, I, do. I don't know because I've just met you for the first time to record <laughs> no, this podcast. This is such a weird way to get to know someone. I know. We are uh, online. Uh, you can check out our other show with <laughs> with Robert, which is weird that we haven't uh-huh. met before. <laughs> um, uh, well, you know, we sure record ever. our parts, you record your yep. parts, and we mix them up together. So. This has been fun, though. Maybe we should do it uh, live sometime. Um, and our other podcast is called Even More News. Cody, you do the rest. Uh, there's a YouTube show called Some More News. Um, I am on Twitter.com and other of those kinds of sites uh, as Dr. Mr. Cody. And Katie is also on those sites as Katie Stoll. It's, you you guys know this. Hell you yeah. Know. Google the names. And yeah. see the accounts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, the social and media. I have a book. You can find it in podcast form, in the audio form. At, at uh, if you just look for after the revolution, wherever there's podcasts, any place there's podcasts, you can find it. Or you can find the text of the book and EPUBs updated every week at atrbook.com. So check it out. And remember, if you don't have enough energy, don't go for coffee like some sort of an idiot. Grab another animal's testicles, shove them inside your body surgically, and uh, gain the ability to birth goat children. All Don't. energy is sex energy. Don't do that. All energy is sex energy. The motto of Behind the Bastards. Mm-hmm. It is not. Worst year ever. Forever mm-hmm. and always. Yep. That's Keep. the fucking episode. Yeah. All right. Jesus. And- Behind the Bastards is a production of Cool Zone Media. For more from Cool Zone Media, Visit our website, coolzonemedia.com, or check us out on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.